God gave you that power so that you can attract one man in your existence in this life. One man who will look at you, be attracted to you, come to you, stick with you, be your husband, be the father of your children. That is the beginning and end of that power. But you can also use that power to deny another woman of her husband. You can use that power to make a man leave his wife and children, abandon them, kill the children, destroy the future of his children for you. That is what Pharaoh is telling the women, the midwives to do. The power you have to bring life, pervert it to destroy life. And unfortunately, a lot of women are like midwives who have abused their position of trust. You may not have directly killed a child, but you have. You have, you have brought heartache, pain, madness, depression to another woman. Heartache to children. Psalms education destroyed. You are like that midwife. You have the power of life. But Pharaoh says, misuse it. And Pharaoh is a system of this world that perverts the purposes of God. Of course, the men are going to say, thank you, pastor. <laughs> but there are men too who are like that. Your day will come. You are a man. You are a father figure. You're supposed to help a young girl get her first job. You're supposed to help her discover life, confidence. But you say, unless you sleep with her, she's not going to get a job. What kind of a father does that? I'm watching the hands that are clapping. So what am I saying? Pharaoh says, you're a midwife. This woman trusts you. She, in her moment of vulnerability, she allows you into her space. You see her nakedness. You see her vulnerable. You see her between life and death. You are the only one in the room. You are the only one she trusts. But when she delivers a child, kill the child. I wonder how many midwives have been perverted by Pharaoh. Sometimes people say women are their worst enemies. I don't like that phrase, but sometimes it appears so. Because you are the ones who break other women's families and lives. You are the ones who make some fathers not take care of their responsibilities at home. You are the ones making some woman cry in bed all through the night because her husband is not home. You are the midwife. You're supposed to bring life, but you're bringing death. How did these midwives respond to Pharaoh's rule? They had a code of conduct. In verse 17, the Bible says that the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. That is what I consider the midwives' code. First, fear God. Fear God. They submitted to God's agenda. They fear God. Because once you fix your hearts on God, everything else falls in the right place. 
Fear God. And I want every woman to adopt this code. Fear God. Fear God. I know you also need money to take care of yourself. You have bills to pay. And you have no help or whatever you think. But you have hands, don't you? You have a brain, don't you? You can get a job. You can get a job. You can train yourself. You can earn an income. Why do you think that your prosperity must cost a family? Fear God. And the reason why the Bible says fear God is because God, God, God is God. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So fear him. In your youth, you may seem like it. Everything revolves around you. But as you grow older and your past investments start paying back, then you say, what have I done? What have I done in this world? What have I done? You've forgotten what you've done. So he says, fear God, because God doesn't forget. That's what the women said. They said, the pastor said, they fear God. So they didn't do the word of the Pharaoh. Resist evil. Resist the temptation. Resist the impulse. Resist the pressure. Whatever you feel, resist it. Resist it. Resist it. You, you may feel it. You may feel even justified. It's amazing how women sometimes feel justified taking another person's husband. His, his wife doesn't make him happy. You know when people say, you wonder, are, are you thinking... Resist evil. Fear God and resist evil. Number three, protect life. This is what I call the midwife's code. Fear God. Resist evil. Protect life. That's what the women said. We're going to fear God. We don't fear you, Pharaoh. We don't fear you. We may not have children, but we'll not kill somebody's children. We may not have a husband, but we're not going to destroy somebody's home. We don't have it, but we're not going to deny other people from having it. So what was their reward? What did God do for them? Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and grew very mightily. So it was because the midwives feared God that he provided households for them. God is a rewarder. Rewarded them in two ways. First is divine favor. Everybody say divine favor. The pastor says God dealt well with them. God singled them out for special attention. That's why their names are in the Bible. Passage could have said a certain woman, a certain wife, a certain whatever. But God honored them by putting their names in the Bible so that thousands of years after them, here at Teshi, a place they never even knew in their lifetime existed, a time frame they couldn't imagine. Somebody's talking about Shipra and poor because God dealt well with them. God remembered them. And God wants you to know if you do right, he will record your name. He will favor you. Your name will never be forgotten. And not only did God give them favor, but God also established them. 
I like how the Bible puts it. And the Lord provided households for them. God gave them houses.